All right, folks. Um, so thanks for joining. Um, so today, I it's mostly, this session is usually, um, I was going to invite the people that have finished with the class and who are currently in the process of looking for jobs. But I also invited the people who just started the, the class. And the reason why is I think sometimes too, when it's early in the class, as you're starting and you're learning, it's imperative to see where you're headed. So you don't, you're not surprised when you get and you start looking for a job and you feel like, oh, I wasn't doing this, or I wasn't doing that. So um, I've noticed some people that are working really hard and they are passionate, they're pushing and really dedicated to learning this stuff. And also I've seen some people who are kind of, uh, you know, I'll come to class, but um, you know, whatever happens, happens. They don't, they're not as hungry for it. So, um, so I just want sometimes if, you know, if I'm the one teaching and I'm always mentioning things, you may be like, oh yeah, whatever. It's like the teacher syndrome. Oh yeah, teach, you're just saying that. But uh, sometimes when you, you get firsthand experience from somebody who's, who sat where you sat and who's now doing what they want to do, I think it's a, it's a good thing to do. So today uh, I want to introduce uh, Wale. Um, he's a friend of mine since college, but also he's a, a former student from the last session who just went through a rigorous step of getting a new job, which he did. So I just wanted him to kind of share his ideas, how the steps, what he did uh, for him to get a job and, 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 and share that. So this is going to be like a discussion where he's going to tell you what he did. And at the end of it, we'll just talk and see so you kind of have an idea of what how to take the class seriously and what kind of things you're going to be uh you're going to need to be comfortable doing and uh like everything else when you're learning a new thing it may be uncomfortable but again i always say whenever you're feeling uncomfortable it means you're learning if you're comfortable it's because you are doing what you already know but when when you're doing things that are strange and things that are not uh, you're not used to, it's uncomfortable. But you start doing it after a while, it gets comfortable because you're used to it. And I always, my one of the models I always have is get comfortable feeling uncomfortable. And that what that tells me is, is that whenever I'm feeling uncomfortable, it means that it's a room for me to grow. It's growth. When you're uncomfortable, that's how you grow. If you're always comfortable, you will never ever grow. So whenever I'm feeling somehow like shy or feel like, ooh, this is kind of rough, I always uh, remind myself with that quote, get comfortable feeling uncomfortable, okay? So that being said, I'm going to pass it over to um, Laole and uh, let him uh, take it from here. So I'm going to stop sharing just in case he wants to share something uh, and uh, we go from there. So Wale, it's all yours, buddy. Thanks, Mo. Thanks, Mo. Uh, if I want to share, uh, do I just click share screen? Uh, yeah. Let's see. Okay. Uh, we can share. Uh, okay. Let me just give me a second. Share screen. I just want to make sure. Okay. Uh, can you guys see my screen? I just want to make sure. Uh, you yes. guys can see. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Uh, so yeah, everyone, uh, just th th Mo, thanks a lot for this opportunity. Uh, I, Mo and I were having this conversation last weekend at his office and I volunteered myself to just use my story to really encourage everybody out there that is thinking about, uh, that is either taking the exams or is thinking about taking the exams and is trying to change their, uh, or they're thinking of changing careers specifically so let me just give you a brief background about myself. Uh, I went to Maryland. I have an engineering degree, uh, similar to Mo. Sorry, Mo. Um, but I went to Maryland just like Mo. I have an economics and engineering degree. And what I was working on prior to joining the class is something very niche. I, I do more of like uh, consulting for environmental. I've, I've worked on some IT stuff, but not as in-depth as the class that... Uh, Mo offers had done. So for me, when I joined this class, I was really focused on trying to change jobs to the IT space. And so as I was taking the class, I was actively looking for jobs. 
I had uh, done one interview with Amazon, but it was a different family group. And I just did an interview with Microsoft uh, and I got an offer for them supporting their cloud infrastructure, but more on the hardware side. But a lot of the knowledge that I uh, had in this class helped me a lot in my interview. Uh, just to give you a little background, my interview was about uh, four and a half hours long. I spoke to uh, four different individuals. Each hour was one hour. Each interview was one hour. And uh, the first person I spoke to had a hardware uh, background. So he was asking me components is just what a server is. Do I know what a motherboard looks like? And, you know, uh, different things that, you know, we had touched on in the class. It really helped me a lot when I was having a conversation with the gentleman. Uh, the second person I interviewed had more of a software background. In fact, the person had a PhD in computer engineering. So he really wanted to test my understanding of the cloud, if I understood networking, caching, and all of that. And because I was very familiar with the AWS uh, cloud infrastructure, it was a lot easier for me to talk about things from a generic standpoint and not necessarily translate and not have the, the key terms that they use in Azure for Microsoft. And then the third person was, third interview was like with the VP of products. Uh, it was just more of like, okay, do I understand how products work, what they do at Microsoft? And then the fourth interview was with the person I'll be uh, reporting to who also has a the technical background in the cloud infrastructure. This individual that actually started uh, two, three businesses and sold it successfully for at least somewhere north of a hundred million dollars. So this is a very, very accomplished individual. And, you know, um, they were very in-depth in their interview questions. So that being said, what I wanted to do is just give you guys an insight into how I prepared when I was trying to uh, look for my roles. So first off, the most important thing you need to have is your resume. So this is just an example of my own resume. Uh, can, I, can everybody see this on their end? Yes. Yep. Okay. So if you look at my resume uh, yep. uh, and I worked, what I did was I worked with someone that was at Amazon and they helped me kind of polish my resume to fit in one page. And why it's important and critical for you to have your resume in one page is that it's uh, recruiters are used to seeing the people that the recruiters or the uh, staffing people, they see thousands of resumes, you know, and so they don't have the time to read as much information as you would think they do. At most, they will probably read the first, you know, one, two, three, four bullet points or the first role that you have that you're trying to use to highlight your relevance to the role. So my thing was, I really had to work really hard to condense all my working experience to just one page. It was very difficult. You know, I, it was a lot of just like, you know, cutting, thinking about what I have done, the softwares I've used or the tools that I've used and what have I accomplished. So that, that was my first thing was, you know, keeping everything to one page minimum. So that my recommendation to anybody that's trying to actively look for a job is, um, keep your resume or your CV to at least a page. So that's the first step. Uh, you also want to make sure when you're talking about your technical skills, you highlight the applications you've worked on, the languages you've used. So in my case, I've worked on SQL, Python, SQL because I use that at times of work, Python, I've used SPS. And the thing that I want to emphasize because one of the, um, questions that they asked me in my Microsoft interviews. Oh, I've seen that you've used SQL. Uh, can you give me an example of what you've used SQL for? What databases did you run your SQL queries? What type of uh, queries did you run? So it's, it's not just important to just uh, outline that you've used certain language. It's very important to emphasize, or at least on the day that you have that phone call interview that you are uh, uh, have used that language and you can defend what is right. And I, I really want to stress this uh, uh, part because uh, a friend of mine was just telling me about how they were interviewing with somebody. This was for a bank that was trying to recruit for 
a data analyst and the person indicated that they had used, they had like five or eight years experience using Oracle. And the first question the person asked them is what is an index table? And the guy could not even answer that. So on that basis, the person interviewing the gentleman just disqualified the guy. So I think it's very important that whatever information you put in your resume, you are able to talk proficiently about it. And if you don't feel comfortable talking proficiently about it, then don't put that information there because you only get one opportunity to really make an impression. And it's very important that you um, uh, be able to you know, talk uh, confidently about uh, whatever information you put in there. So the second thing that I did once I was able to kind of, you know, figure out which languages, what applications, databases, and you don't have to use my formats where I have my education at the bottom. Some people like to move the education on top. Uh, I was told by the person that was reviewing my resume that worked at Amazon that Amazon recruiters, especially if you're applying to Amazon, they like to see your work experience first, and then they would like to see what sort of tools or things you've done in your work experience and later they can see your education and your certificates. So at the time I built this resume, I had not even taken the Amazon exam when I landed in the interview or even the, I have not even, uh, I just apply, use this to apply for Microsoft as well. Any questions so far before I continue? No. no. Okay. So the next thing I do is typically my own process when I want to apply for a job and I'll use Amazon's job search as an example is, so when I go into the job search por uh, portal for Amazon, I just, I preloaded this right here. So I can kind of walk you through what I do. So you go to, if it's Indeed or whichever job site you're using, whether it's um, uh, Nice, Indeed, or you're actually going to the, act the, you're going to the actual company's website what I do is, so let's say, for example, I'm interested in working in, I think I found a role here. Uh, let's just use this cloud infrastructure architect role for Amazon, even though this is based in Canada. So my process, what I do is I first try to read what the job description is just to get a sense of what they're looking for, because typically in most job advertisements, they will indicate, okay, we're looking for someone that does this. So in this case, it says, okay, they're looking for technical cloud computing architects to help develop their expertise, you know, key customer solution as web applications. So I will highlight this for me. So I need to demonstrate in my resume uh, that I am comfortable working with web applications. So this is something that Mo has taught us in our class, even though it's at the elementary level, but I will start thinking, okay, how have I worked on web applications? What tools did I use? And in our case, so if I wanted to create or a sentence, I would say, okay, I ran uh, batch scripts on my EC2 instances to install uh, an Apache web server. And then I can now maybe, so that could be a way of demonstrating I've used, I'm comfortable with uh, web applications, you know? And then big data, that might be, so that's a NoSQL database. You might talk about the things you did there, but I would pay attention to these key search terms because with a lot of these job searches, the computer, they have computers that I've, what I've observed, they have computers that are looking for key search terms in your CV. So if you want to improve your chances of matching, it's very important that you have these key search terms. So once I kind of read the job description, the next thing I look at is, basic qualifications, right? So as I read through that, I want to be able to demonstrate that, okay, for example, it says you have to have the qualification of integrating cloud services with on-prem technologies from Microsoft, IBM, Oracle, HP, SAP. I would ask myself, do I have these experience? Is there something I can demonstrate that shows that I have worked on either one of these technologies, right? Then you know, I'll ask myself the same thing with experience with IT compliance and risk management uh, requirements as well. So most roles will typically have the basic qualifications, which is they will tell you, and then they will tell you their preferred, like what they would really like to see you have, 
right, in your resume. So one of the key things in outline here is knowledge of primary AWS services, EC2, Elastic Load Balance, RDS, Route 53. So now if I go into my resume, maybe the first thing I'll say is uh, ran, launched EC2 instances uh, in a Linux environment, uh, and also set up load balancing and auto scaling groups for this, right? So you can add that as a, like a bullet point in your resume. So that, that would show at least at the very least if the recruiter is reading really it, okay, this person actually has knowledge of EC2, ELD, RDS, Route 53, uh, and an S3 as well. Then, you know, I'll look at it again. It might say infrastructure automators through DevOps scripting. Now we may, I'm just using this as a job as an example. Some people may not have Python, others might have other different skill sets. But what I try to do is you may not have uh, all the re preferred uh, qualifications, but at least you should demonstrate that you have at least two or three of the preferred qualifications. Um, and so once I kind of have an idea of what the preferred qualification is, I now begin to kind of type in my resume I try to keep it to two sentences to make it very concise and people can kind of see when they really, they understand what I've worked on. So for example, I'll, I'll show you, I was looking online for a cloud architect resume. So see this person's statement. This is another thing I do is I try to go online and see the language people use for building their resumes as my framework. I would not encourage anybody to copy this word for word and um, try to, to retool it to fit their own style because a lot of these recruiters are, are very good at taking your, the first sentence of your resume and they type it on Google. I've actually had a recruiter tell me that, that, oh yeah, you know, I noticed that you didn't have certain things on your resume that we've typically found people doing. So this is a virtualization of cloud architect, right? And this person has worked with compliance and information security teams to understand reported vulnerability and plan remediation. So in this resume, it says uh, something in this sort of job requirement that talks about working with IT compliance and risk management requirements. So if I see this person's sentence, then I, if I wanted to structure this uh, in my own language, I would say, oh, I've collaborated with information security teams to identify potential uh, uh, points of failures and created remediation plans. So that would be the way I would take this person's sentence and try to frame it in my language and that I am comfortable with, you know? And then it's the same thing I would look, if I can't find something, I would go online as well and look to try to see if I can find similar job descriptions, you know? So, I'm just trying to see if I can find an example of somebody that's used EC2 instances. Uh, but before I go forward, any questions so far? No. Nah. Okay. No, this is great. This is very excellent. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so this is my process. You don't have to use it. Um, I, I, yeah, I remember I saw something today, a solutions architect, New, uh, New York looking for this. Uh, so if I wanted to apply for this role, the key thing is typically when they say they want seven years of design, implementation or consulting, they typically, it's very hard to find someone with this type of experience. I said, unless you're like, like more, where you have that, uh, you're comfortable and you've been in the industry that long, most of us probably don't have those skill sets. But what you want to do is you want to demonstrate that you have something that is close to that or you're capable of doing that, you know? So it says seven plus years. What I would wanna do is I wanna show that, okay, I have either done something designed or implemented or consulted with some sort of systems architecture, whether it's, you know, building a basic website that you have, as long as you show that you're capable or you have that comp uh, competency, it really helps in your job search as well. Now, granted, this is, Amazon and they're a lot more picky and they have a higher standard of requirement. But I, what I want to say to everyone, encourage everyone is when I was going through my job process, I was applying to 
at least five to 10 jobs a day. And I can tell you that out of that five to 10, I was rejected every time. But what I noticed is as I kept on going through this routine of just reading job qualifications, carefully looking at the keywords that they're looking for and putting that in my resume, I became very good at putting together a resume. Uh, and so my, my thing is don't give up, first of all, keep trying. Uh, if you need to reach out to people in the class or me or Mot uh, or whoever to help you practice, I think it's very important to keep doing that. Now, you, you don't have to be like me. You may not have the time to put uh, in five to you know, six or whatever number of job applications. But what I want to encourage is like, at least develop a routine of you know, working on your resume because that's like the hardest thing. And remember, you can use, and I want to stress this, you can use the same resume for the same role, for different roles. Sometimes you might have to change a little sentence here or move different things. Uh, in my own case, I can show you an example. I had like, I reached out to different people. I have about uh, almost five different resumes, depending on what I'm working on and what kind of roles I'm, I'm doing. And the things I use these experience, these different resumes to kind of tailor uh, tailor it to whatever specific role I'm applying to. Another thing I wanted to stress to everyone that I use that helped me increase my chances of getting interviews is LinkedIn. So I noticed earlier on Mo had logged in. I would strongly encourage everybody to get a LinkedIn, create a profile, you know, and then go on the job. Uh, and I'm, I'm, if you're not familiar with, with LinkedIn, try to do that as well. Or go on the job search and you know if you're looking for architect solutions to, uh, you know type it and see what pops up so now what will happen is you see different uh job descriptions and as you're scrolling so for example i see oh they're looking for a solutions architect in government public services there are two of two people i know that work in this company so you may not have a direct connection in LinkedIn, but one good thing LinkedIn does is it shows you um, um, people you're connected. So for example, if I wanted this solutions architect government role, I see that I know three, two people here that work there. So what helps your in, uh, recruiting, what helps you land an interview? Because everything I'm saying is just to get the interview. It's not even to prepare for an interview is looking at your connections. Uh, LinkedIn is a powerful, I found it to be a very powerful search tool, uh, not only for jobs, but to point you to people that you may know that may know someone that would have a job. It's okay, send these people messages. Hi, my name is this, you know, I'm recently, I'm searching for this role. I see that you work in this company. Uh, would you mind referring me for this role? I mean, you may get rejected, you may get accepted, but what happens is put yourself out there. It helps you get better and it helps you, it builds your confidence, right? Because what you want to do is when you get the interview, you want to be able to have the confidence to talk about what you have in your resume. So if, if I wanted to apply for this solutions, architect, government, public services, I'll say, okay, I know this person, who is this individual? Oh, okay, it's this person. I would email this person or send them a message if I don't know them personally. Uh, but if I know them personally, I can just send them a message. And then they see, I'll go in here. These are the required uh, qualifications. I would read through it and I'll try to see, okay, for example, it says minimum of two years experience in proposal development or federal state. Do I meet some of these requirements? No, I don't, right? I would look to see if there are other requirements that I could potentially meet. So I go into here. Solutions architect in Arlington, Virginia. I don't know anybody in this company, but I'll just keep looking to get a sense of the type of role I'm interested in, or a role that is a good fit. And if by chance you happen to know someone, that's even perfect. So what the referral does is companies are told, employees within companies are told that if they know of any good candidates, they should refer them. And typically some companies would give the person who refers you compensation if you get hired. But also companies believe that good talent that they train also can bring in uh, good talent as well. So take advantage of your social networks, 
uh, and really be active and try to see if you know people that work in companies you're interested in or they know somebody that is in the industry you're interested in and you can really reach out to them. I, I want to encourage everybody. It's a very, I, I mean, for me, I applied to, I, I can't count how many jobs, maybe like close to 50 to 100 was a high number, but I only had uh, at most four interviews. One of the first interview I did, the company interviewed me the second round, they said of COVID, they put the job on hold. The second one did interview as well. It went well, they put that on hold. Third one did interview, they gave me a job. This was Amazon, but I declined it because it, it wasn't gonna work for my situation. And then the fourth one that I just got with Microsoft, that I'm, and so think about it, this is four out of what, 50 or even more, let's just even say 100, 4%. But all you need is that one. And that's the key thing is you have to keep actively searching and you know looking, uh, work on your resume, keep practice interviewing and just make sure that whatever it is that you want to apply for your you can demonstrate that you're competent in in it as well uh with i don't uh, want to yeah and look at look at the number there look at the pay i see there on one yeah 22 yeah so it's the pay is good but you, you you're not just you got to work for you got to earn it and you got to be serious from the beginning now till as you look so just don't you know, you want to be a believer. You want to believe in yourself. You can learn it, but you have to follow it with hard, consistent work. And what Laole is saying here, you see, like, he's very meticulous. He's working. He's not just being lazy, but he's putting in some work because at the end of it, it's worth it. All you need is that first yes. You only need one yes. And, but it takes work for you to get it. Once you get in, it becomes easier if you want to switch jobs or you want to change jobs. So I just want to add that in. Yeah, no, thank, thanks, Mo. In fact, one of the things that motivated me to apply for Amazon is I remember when we took our class and Fabrice said he had a systems engineer uh, uh, interview. That really, really motivated me. I was like, oh, wow, you know, if somebody in our class can at least get one Amazon interview and he made it all the way because Amazon and Microsoft, those are like the big companies and their process is very, very rigorous. Like this is four hours back to back. By the time you're done with the second hour, you're tired. You don't even know how to answer someone's <laughs> questions. And each person is testing your knowledge and capability on a specific thing. And the, the whole purpose of this interview is to see how you think when you're under stress. I mean, they could easily just set it up, you know, just one hour and they say you're hired, but nobody wants to hire someone that I cannot demonstrate that they can handle stress because I mean, they're not going to pay you $130,000 to be comfortable. They want, when they pay you and they come to you and there's something difficult at the job, they know you're capable of doing it. And I believe that this class helps all of us in that environment. So, you know, hearing for Beast, uh, do that interview, it really motivated me to really up my game. and say, okay, you know what? I need to start even being more proactive, you know, uh, practicing our uh, a, a case examples in the class that also helped as well because for example in my interview uh, with Microsoft one of the things that helped me was when I was talking about just working in a Linux environment and you know just saying the basic commands you know LS you know the, the guy was like okay this is not somebody that is just moving from one industry to another and we're gonna have to train him on the job because it's a, it's, that's expensive for a company that's paying you, as you can see, $130,000. They don't want to spend that much time training you. So they want to see that you're competent, you know? And uh, I can share with you other websites that uh, have, uh, sent, I know Mo has sent like, uh, Mr. Roman and Mo has sent like links. I would really encourage you guys to look at those links and practice because that's what's going to get you comfortable when you get that uh, first job interview. And once you get the first job interview, it really, really opens the door uh, to other things. So like I said, uh, just to summarize, you know, have a process for your job application. This is my resume. If I'm applying for a different job, believe me, this resume will be gone. I will tear it away and start all over again. I, I, I would spend typically somewhere between two to three hours building my resume 
I would have three different people critique what I'm saying. They will tell me, oh, don't use this, don't do that. And, and it's annoying. I'm not going to sit down and say, nobody likes to work on something for two hours, three hours. And then, you know, somebody tells you what you wrote. It makes no sense. But that feedback is what helped me uh, really, really streamline the information I worked on. And really, really, so the moment I say it like, oh, in my job, I use, I do data analysis using SQL queries and all this thing. It, they say, okay, this person is competent. Now, once they get me on the phone and I'm talking about what I use SQL for, I can now give specific examples. For each thing you write on your resume, make sure you have at least two examples that demonstrates how you are able to uh, accomplish this. So one of the things that uh, I that I learned that these got, that IT companies look for is they like this approach. It's called the star approach to interviews. And that's what helped me out a lot. So basically the, the way it works, because there'll be some technical questions is you give a situation of how you use whatever it is you did. You talk about the task and then there's the action and then there's the results. So that framework is how I always try to put my resume for any technical role. I don't just say, oh, I use SQL. How many times did you use SQL? Quantify it. They like to see metrics. What did you use SQL for? Oh, how many uh, EC2 instances did you, you know, like different, depending on whatever uh, requirements or you want to quantify at the very least how you were using that application, that software, what you used it for, what was the result, you know? So th these are things that uh, help improve your chances of getting noticed by a recruiter. Yeah. Uh, but with that, I'll, I'll pass it over to, I'll open the uh, conversation to people in the group if they have any questions. Uh, I'm free and available to answer now. Um, so again, folks, uh, this is a, a, a time, especially for those of you that are in the process of fixing your resumes and, 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 and applying for jobs. So like everything else, it's, you're building a muscle. The first time you start working in your resume, it's gonna take time. It's gonna, you're gonna put in a few hours. But like what I said, as you start doing this, you start picking up the lingo, you start picking up the, the key things you look for, and it becomes easier for you to make changes to your resume. So it's a muscle, you build it. That's why I keep saying, if you, if you're feeling uncomfortable at first, it's everyone who's a professional now, at one point they were feeling uncomfortable, but they don't quit, they just keep at it and you learn. And like you said, you get critiqued, you send it to people, so look at it and talk to people, try to ask people who are in the industry, who are maybe working, say, hey, what do you think about this resume? How can I make it better? But one thing is defending your resume. And for those of you that are still taking the class, the stuff we do, you can put as experience. For example, I start EC2 instances and I install Apache to develop, to build a web application, a high scalable web application with load balancer uh, uh, for high availability. So the stuff we're doing, you can literally say, you're not lying that you, you haven't done it. You, that's why I'm so big on you guys practicing because if you've done it, they ask you, how do you start, how do you install, how do you create a web server? Say, okay, I launch an instance, install Apache, and then either I do WordPress. When you start explaining it in that way, they know, okay, this person knows what they're talking about. But it starts by you doing the work, by you reading, by you not just depending on what I teach in class, but going back and reading and watching other YouTube videos. And Wale was pretty good at that because I would teach in class, he would learn something, but if something doesn't make sense to him, he'll go again and add, watch YouTube videos and watch more things just so he understands it. So the next time he comes to class, he's now familiar with, with, with what we went through. So first work hard, work very, very hard at understanding what you're doing and then reading stuff and then and, and, and immersing yourself in this stuff. So as the time comes for your job, you're already comfortable doing this stuff. So the second part is the resume building. It's very uncomfortable for people, but you go through that process. You, 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 you critique each other, you know, but it gets easier. And once you have your process set, you're going to start running laps around people. Sending three, four resumes a day isn't going to be that hard as when you started. So uh, I just want to throw that in. 
But in the meantime, if you guys have any questions or, uh, you know, the floor is open, you can ask and, 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 and we can uh, um, see how, the, how best to answer those questions. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Wally, and thank you, Mo. Thanks a lot, Wally, um, for sharing your thoughts and uh, your processes with the rest of the class. Yeah, you're welcome. And uh, guys, as you can see, you know, it's doable. The only thing is, is um, we have to work harder. Nothing comes easy. Anything that comes easy is not tangible. So we have to work extra harder. Whatever you need in life, you can have it, you know, if you work towards it, you know. So um, uh, what we, are, we plan to do is to divide um, this particular session into study groups um, of four to five people. And um, these people will continue to work together. And by so doing, you guys will be um, uh, helping each other and uh, work hands in glove and um, make sure that everybody succeed. Because the end goal of all this class is not just to get a certification and then hang it on your um, walls. You know, I'm not going to be passing by on those walls to see them. But when you get jobs, trust me, I'll be passing by. You'll see me because I'll be asking for that gas money, you know. So um, we all want you guys to succeed. We want you guys to succeed. Trust me. That's the end goal. We, we, we feel proud. We take pride in you being successful. You landing a job. It's not just to come here and pay your money and then, you know, say, oh, okay, I've done something. But actually, it's for you to be able to benefit from it. Say, okay, I've paid my money. I put my, um, my energy and my effort into it. And now, you know, I can say something about it. Like um, one of the guys that is going to be visiting next session, he, he actually didn't take the AWS, he took the cybersecurity. This boy is just 25 years old. Him and his wife, they came through IMOTech. And uh, he called us yesterday and today. These guys are actually working in the IT industry now. They just bought a property, you know. That's a very, that's a huge, you know, testimony, you know. So that's the kind of testimonies that we want to continue to hear, you know. And I'll be more happier if somebody will buy me one property. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, so good evening uh, to everybody. My name is Fabrice. So uh, thank you, Wale, for all the information and, tip that, and tips that you, you have shared here. It's really important for us. Uh, and thanks more for the platform. Uh, yeah, so me, uh, I'm still building my resume and it's really frustrating because I'm, I was talking to many people and uh, they would say, oh, you have to change this, you have to change uh, the, your, your experience, many things that you have to change. And it's been like one month, I'm changing stuff in my on my resume and it's not really easy but i uh, i keep doing i keep changing and now uh so uh, what they told about we have to you know accommodate the resume uh our resume with the the the, the basic qualification that they are asking so that's really good but uh, the question here i have is um so do do I need to build the main resume or should I just go and find or look the job description and try before applying, try to adjust it with my resume for okay. every job that I have to apply or I have to build like I have a main resume and uh, I'm going out of that resume to change it for any other application. That's the first question. And the second is about the skills. The skills that we have to mention here is, um, I saw you mentioned like any type of technology or application that you are using like Java and all that. So if somebody doesn't have those skills in, in different languages like Java or Python or anything, but the skills can be also like, uh, you know, um, I don't know, because on my skill, I put the uh, backup and recovery I put uh, things like, oh, let me, I have it here. Uh, okay, resume. All right, so yeah, I have here automation, backups, 
disaster recovery, uh, content delivery, cost optimization, security system, Linux, JSON, and YAML. That's what I put on my skills. And also the, the interactive skills like uh, good communication skills, uh, problem solver, and self-motivated engineer. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, that's the question I have. Please. Let me answer your first question. Uh, I, I would, uh, good job for Brees, first of all. Uh, um, I just want to tell, congratulate you at least, you know, you're doing the, what I consider the hardest process in this job search, building a resume. So don't give up. Uh, the first thing is I'll say to you in your question is you can have, some people usually have a master resume. And what that means is like something that just writes down everything that they have. You know, so for example, I'm, go I'm going to share with you a friend of mine, his master resume. It's three pages. You can see it just outlines everything he's done or worked on. And so, so now if he's applying for a job, what he would do is he would look at the job and now move certain things he's worked on to make sure it meets the, uh, the requirements or at least the, at the minimum, the, the basic qualifications for the job. So think about basic qualifications as this is what I need you to at least have. And then preferred qualification is it would be great if you have this. You, it's, it's very rarely do you see situations where you have uh, all uh, somebody meeting both, but as long as you can show that you have and the, the basic qualification you can be good. Now for the question on the technical skills, you can put whatever it is you want as your technical skills. My recommendation to you is make sure that the technical skills you're putting is relevant to the job. And I'm just trying to see if I can find an example of a resume to kind of use, give my point is, uh, let's see if I can find one. Let me see if I can go on Indeed. Let's see if I can find a Solutions Architect role. Uh, yeah, so Solutions Architect. I'm just going to say uh, job type. Uh, close this. I want to see if I can find an entry level job description. Okay, so this is for. Let's look at this uh, one in uh, Silver Spring. Um, if I was just reading this, uh, this is, let's see, this is for and AWS. It's a nice one too, and it's a remote job. Yeah. It's like entry level, so, uh, you know, so, and this was posted 12 days ago. Yeah, actually, let me find, this is even remote. This is in Bethesda, uh, perfect. So, here they, they say they want the, their preferred uh, qualifications, right? This that, granted this is a DevOps uh, certification, but if this said something like AWS Architect <laughs> Solution, you have that, right? So that would be it. And then um, trying to see if they have their job description. Uh, so for example, if they said okay, they wanted experience incorporating test-driven development. For, for Breeze, the answer to your question is, if you have this as skill, I would put test-driven development, uh, uh, experience deploying uh, applications in test-driven uh, development. That's, that's just assuming, that's saying you have that skill set, right? Okay. So that's, okay. how I would, that's how I would tailor it. Does that help you out? Yes, yes, okay. Yeah, I so- see. I got a point. So, so like, one of the good things about Indeed is Indeed lets you search. It's more robust than other places. You can search for, depending on your level, if you want something experienced. I would usually start off at the entry level and I would look and try to see. So it gives you contracts, part-time, depending on what you want. I would look and try to see something that I can at least build a resume for that and apply. You okay. may not get the call but it, it helps you. It's like a muscle, like Mo said, it helps your confidence a lot. Okay, I'll get the point. So good, look at this. This is, this is a perfect example. So this is 
AWS engineer, Phoenix operation. This is supposedly an entry level job. Experience with AWS services such as EC2, IAM. Fabrice, you have this experience, you've taken the class. So what you would just say is uh, uh, a, a proficient in using EC2, uh, Linux, Linux and Windows based EC2 instance, then you can now say what you did with EC2 instances. I used, uh, I launched, I, I, bootstrapped, I bootstrapped a script and I launched a web-based application using Apache, like Mo said. And the thing is, there's plenty of resources available for you to do that. So this, this role right here is something that if you are able to kind of, you can show that you at least have these two experiences. Experience implementing scalable softwares and systems. We've already done scaling, auto scaling group in AWS. So this is yeah. something that if you can demonstrate that, what else do you have? AWS certifications, you already know that. Then it says technical skills preferred, no SQL technologies. What I would do if I don't have these experiences, I would go learn about something online and try to see if I can practice doing the basic things with that technical experience. And like most said, you don't, you may not have all the experience. Not everybody's going to have all four of these no SQL databases. But what they, they can, you can say, you know, I've worked on, I'm familiar with MongoDB. I know how to do certain, uh, run certain things on MongoDB. And I'm also familiar with Elasticsearch. And, you know, you just want to demonstrate that you're proficient on it, you know. Okay. So does that answer both your questions? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, hi, uh, my name yes. is Sama. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Wally, for sharing your experience with us. It really means a lot. I've been, I was feeling a lot of frustration also building my, of my resume, especially because I haven't, this is the first um, IT job that I'll be looking for, so my background had nothing to do with it. Yeah. So it was... Um, we have difficulties hearing you. Hello. Yeah, I can hear yes, you. Can you hear me better. now? Yeah. Yes. Good. So because it's my first IT job, so it's a it's a lot of frustration, a lot of unknowns because I really don't know how to put stuff together, how to market myself uh, based on my past work experience. So I see that you are you saying it's better to have like a one page resume. So do we just have to include like information on the last job? You don't have to list all the past experience on the resume because if you do, you'll be more than one page, right? Uh, the, uh, it, it all depends on what you're doing on your last job and what kind of job you're applying for. So let me, if I was in your situation and I did not have um, the required IT experience and this AWS class is really my entry level experience, Yes. The kind of jobs I would even be applying to would be a little more different and I'll be very strategic. So what do I mean? I would maybe even go for IT support staff jobs. Because the, the thing is, uh, where's your, I, I, have, I have this philosophy that in your, uh, where's your end goal in life? If my end destination is I want to be a solutions architect, are there any things that are in between solutions architect and where I am? And can I go for that? Right. So there's the cloud partitioner certificate, which is like the entry is the basic level class. So I would go, I would look online and try to see, can I find a cloud partitioner uh, job, something that even if it's just contractual brace or just something that is short term to get me comfortable with the interviewing process. Now, which the answer to your resume, what I will say is uh, try to keep it one page because think about it. Put yourself in the position of the person that has posted this job on Indeed. They would get, look at this, it just says about uh, 51 to 74 percent of their applicants have responded within the last three days. I, I can't even imagine if that is like a hundred job applications, imagine you reading this, right? Uh, reading a hundred resumes and trying to figure out out of that hundred Give me, I want the best 10. That, that is overwhelming for anybody. So if you see, even if somebody presents you with a three page resume, you may not have the patience to read uh, 
into the second page. You are really looking for the key uh, bullet points and you are checking your boxes. Okay, does this person have this? They have this, they have this. Okay, I'll put this person in my pile of to consider. Because remember, just like you are applying for a job, there's somebody out there that maybe has the same experience or more experience than you are. And they also are applying as well. So you really need to, that's why I always stress and encourage everyone to try to put it in one page. Now, as your, for your previous employers uh, or current role you're holding, it all, it's all up to you. Uh, you if, if you have some things you can talk about that you can translate to an IT space, sure, you, you, you can do that. So like, I, I can give you an example. Like, so in my job, what I do is very environmentally driven and it's very, very niche, but I work with IT guys. And I knew that a lot of these uh, IT people, they like someone that works with IT teams. So I said, oh, my first sentence was, I've led a cross-functional teams of subject matter experts to deploy a third-party enterprise solution. Now, if the software is looking for enterprise and it sees enterprise, uh, as a keyword, it's, my resume would stand out to this, uh, whatever algorithm that is running behind the scenes and it would pull it out for the recruiter to talk about. I will use things like SaaS. You know, you see some job advertisement, they'll say SaaS or platform as a service. Now, this is me. I, I, I had some of these experience and I knew how to kind of massage what I'm doing, but I, I'm also comfortable to talk about it. So I would not encourage you to put anything that you cannot defend or talk about in your resume. And it's okay if you don't get that first job interview, the, the most important thing is you landed one. And once you have one, it's a lot easier. You keep practicing and you get better at it. And so by the time you get to the one you really want, you're very confident. Uh, I hope that answered your question. Yes, it did. And then when I'm looking at your resume, so you decide to just put like a your last, your last position, you yes, just enter yes. multiple bullet points. points yes. And then the previous one, you just made like a few, like a paragraph explaining whatever you were doing. Yes. So, so I've that seen, helps also reduce. Yes, the, it does. I've seen people like if they've had, so maybe in a year you've worked on four different jobs. Put, if it's four different roles, I'll just have four of these, the title. And I will summarize in two sentences what I did. I mean, and the way I, uh, the way I'll kind of simplify it is if somebody came up to you in your house on the elevator and they said, oh, please tell me what you do. You should be able to say it in less than 45 seconds. So that would be my uh, encouragement to, uh, to you or advice. Okay. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Wale. Yes, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, so I have a quick question for you. Yes. Um, does, because I know you've gone through a lot of job offers. Is it almost, is it all the IT jobs that require you being a citizen? Uh, so, it, be, so I, I'll answer this in two ways. Okay. If you are primarily in the DC, Maryland, Virginia area, mm -hmm more than likely the biggest employers are government related employers or government contractors. So okay. they require you to be a US citizen. So this is another thing, but I live in Pennsylvania. I live in Pittsburgh. There are not that many government jobs. There are more commercial client jobs. So it's different for me. They okay. may not require citizenship. They may require permanent residency. So here, another thing is, like Mo mentioned, how bad do you want a job? If the only job available to you where you have the best shot is in Kansas and you're not married, you don't have kids and you're young, I, 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 for me, I was ready, you know, if I'm in that person's <laughs> willing position. Willing to move. Me too, willing, I'm ready to move. You have to be ready to move. Yeah. In short, that, that's all I'm saying. If it's in North Dakota, so I, I, I would also encourage people because I was doing that. In fact, most of the jobs I was applying for was outside where I lived. So I would encourage people to look outside of the state if you are willing to move. But if you're not willing to move and you're in the DMV area, 
it's going to be a lot more competitive and hard. I'm not saying you can't do it. You can, but you may have to go work in Hager style. That could be where you have to go to to get the job you want. And let me, let me piggyback on that. Um, that's a very good point. So um, I've known guys who are in the industry, like one of my friends, he's a DBA, and he wanted top secret clearance. And most of the jobs he was looking for here, they said, you have to have top secret clearance. So what he did, he ended up taking a job in California. Now, it was paying well, but uh, it was paying okay, but in Calif California, it's expensive. But the thing that attracted him was he wanted that top secret clearance. So he, he, he took the job in California and moved. He was in California for about a year. Once he got his top secret clearance, guess what he did? He applied for a job again here, got it, and then moved back. So in the IT world, one of the things is you can move around. Um, I've known some guys who would take a job out of town for like three to six months. So they, they just get their foot in the door so they can just know what the job is like. And it's always easy for you to find another job while you have a job. So even if you have to move out of state for temporarily for, for uh, three, six months, no, you know, just do that because the end goal is what you want. I also know one of my former coworkers who took a job in New York. So he would literally drive from here, go to New York, live in a motel from Thursday, from Monday to Thursday, and come Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then go back. And he did that for six months because that is what he needed to do to get in until he got something here. So again, more flexibility goes to the people who are willing to go out of state. But if you're not willing to go out of state, it's still doable. But that just means you gotta be more, uh, you know, you gotta be more, more uh, ferocious with your job search, and learning what you're doing here. Um, one thing about the AWS jobs are, yeah, there's quite a lot of them in this area that are uh, um, based for um, U.S. citizen because it's got a lot of government jobs. But they also have a lot of jobs that are for private companies. Um, we also teach um, um, cybersecurity. And in the cybersecurity, there are, two, there are two classes. You have the RMF, and then you have the stock analyst. The RMF around here, most of the jobs, they require you being a citizen. So if people are doing that, we usually will talk to those guys and say, hey, do you, do you have a green card or do you have your citizenship? So based on what you have, we'll say take this class because this class will be more likely for you to get a job than the other one. So these are some of the things you got to you got to think about. But trust me, sometimes you may think like, I don't want to move out of state, but moving out of state, sometimes you can save more money. You don't go out as much, maybe do some stuff that you waste money here doing, but then you stay focused and get what you want and you can always come back. So yeah. That's a good point, uh, and that's a good question, uh, Sola. Okay, thank you. Hey, Mo, also to add to that, uh, what you just said, this is Stefan, by the way. Just yeah. just add a little something to uh, the uh, I think it was Sola question. You even have company that will allow you to, you know, you tell them you're ready to relocate. Once you make your proof there, you know, they might sometimes allow you to start working from home. You know, they might tell you, oh, it's, it's full time, it's on site. Once you get there, you prove them that you're able to do the work and they can try you. They can make some arrangement and let you work from your house. And then you can go back to wherever you're from without any problem. So like Mo said, the first thing is to try to get your foot in. You can try to get your foot in and put too many conditions because right now you're trying to get in, right? Mm -hmm. Once you get in, you can start, you know, choosing where you want to go or what you want to do. But to first get in, sometimes you have to, you know, compromise and, once you show you make your proof, then they, they will allow you to sometimes work remotely. Thank you. I, I think these are more, I think uh, you raised some very good points. One website that I know that is very good with uh, contract jobs uh, that I've heard a lot of my IT friends use is dice.com. That's a, a good platform for where you get a, a lot of these short term contract jobs. And the, the good, the beauty about these platforms is that with a contractor role, because they are most organizations that like, I mean, look at this. This is in Mount Mount Lake Terrace, Washington. Uh, this is Washington State. I'm in Seattle, like around the, that area. If you apply for this job and you are the only person that really shows your hunger and you want to move, I mean. They, you get the contract, you run it, but what you can show is once you have that, as you're doing the job, you are also applying. You're not because remember it's a stepping stone 
yeah. to get to where you want to go to social I, I want to really encourage you like don't I know how I know how like um distracting Maryland is there's so many things in Maryland to take your money and your time <laughs> I mean I used to live in Maryland for 11 years right now you can't pay me money to move in Maryland like I just find it it's too distracting but the beauty is when you go to somewhere else you get what you want you are focused you go in there you're like I'm in Washington you don't know anybody so what you know is I'm here for three months and I'm gone and I've seen people use these contract roles while they're there they're talking to the employer they you know work with the person that is their primary contact and before you know it they might say oh, do you guys have something full-time I'm looking for something full-time they might say oh, well our office in Washington doesn't have but Kansas does and before you know it in two years you have what you want and if you want to come back to Maryland Maryland is there it's not running anywhere yeah that's true yeah. Your friends are still there. How much is a plane ticket? Yeah. You know, by the time they're paying you one hundred and twenty thousand dollars, it's not going to cost you anything to fly back to them. You see, so I don't want the fear of. Do not let the fear of leaving something uh, familiar stifle you from going after you want. Oh. So, like I and so like I said it in the conversation. How bad do you want what you want? If you really want it badly, you would ignore all the noise and concentrate yeah. and focus and have a strategy. So DICE is a very good website for contract jobs mm -hmm. that have short-term roles that can circumvent that uh, U.S. citizen requirement. Because a lot of these contracting companies are Indians, and what they'll do is they'll say, okay, go enroll in this university during this time. We'll help you out getting your paperwork. So if, that, if somebody's in that situation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hello. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Hello. Hi. Um, my name is Fatmata. I have a question. Yes. Uh, my question is: Assuming, let's say, your first degree, your background is in accounting. So, how will you put that in your resume? Looking at um, IT job. What do you think? How will that sound? That's one. And number two, let's say the field you are working presently has nothing to do with IT. And now you are looking for an IT job. So how will you incorporate that in your resume? Uh, so, so Laule, I would yeah, take... More, yeah, more take. I was going to say you should lead this. So, um, so here's a good example. I, um, I worked as a research analyst for eight years before I got an IT field. So mm -hmm. when I got an IT field, I'm looking for a database job, right? The one thing I had to do is incorporate my understanding of um, numbers and, and finances, right, with IT. So I run a database where the, the, the database is putting in numbers and this, they create reports. So I was saying, I have business experience where um, based on my past experience, not only can I process the database, the data, but I can look at the data and see if something is wrong, if it makes sense, because I understand how the analysis of the data works. So when I ended up getting my first job, not only was I a DBA, but I was also slash analyst because the data that's being processed, I can look at it and see if something is off or something is not. So it's always about how can you complement what you, your background. So if you're doing accounting, right? You know, a lot of the, the IT world uses analysts, they, they, you know, they want to see that, um, how business are doing business trend. So you can say your background of experience of being an accountant, you can also, uh, um, not only are you going to be just an IT person, but you can see how the decisions, what you're working on can relate to the company's bottom line. So it's always about how you can tie your, back, your past experience to what the IT world and how the company can benefit not only from you being uh, technical, but also you have an, a financial or accounting background. So it's all relevant. It's all about how you, 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 you tie that. And for them, when they were hiring me, that was a good thing because it's like, okay, you're going to be processing data that's going to the White House. It's going to um, uh, Congress. If, if, you, if there's a mistake there and you just run in the load and you don't know what's going on, that's not an advantage. So I was like, you know, if I can show you guys that I can look at the numbers and see if they make sense or if something doesn't make sense, that was a plus. So it's always about how you tie your past experience to what your, to your technical experience. Okay. 
Okay. And trust me, accounting, especially with this um, machine learning and and all this 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 forecasting, the accounting field, there's so much you can get. Uh, it's it, it's more complementary than you think, as far as like uh, how companies can can value your background, understanding that you know accounting and all of these things. Now you're also technical, so the two can work together. Uh, Lowly, please feel free to, to to add any any comments you have regarding this situation. Yeah, thank you, Mo. Um, um, just to further chime in on what you said, um, in fact, I think your accounting background is excellent. No matter what technology you use, the technology has to be has to solve a business problem. So a lot of what's happening in the IT field, like Mo mentioned, is companies now are looking not just for somebody that can program or can build applications, but they understand data because that's what this application is doing, collecting data and processing it. So I don't know what kind of accounting tools you use, if it's whether it's SAP driven or um, Salesforce or whatever it is, but if you are performing some sort of analysis, what you want to do is demonstrate that you can take, you can build something or you understand how that thing is built and you can also um, analyze that data. So a field where I think your skill set to be relevant will be like big data companies. And a lot of big data companies, they're looking for people that don't only can use like SQL, uh, Python, but they also understand like one of the things that is popular for companies now is like Tableau, is like a visualization software. So if you can just even say, I use Tableau in my work to analyze our inventory, to see places where I could eliminate waste. And they see that, okay, this is a, someone with a finance background and is moving into IT. Uh, they, they will give you a chance. Because the thing about information technology is people want to see how you can think and how you can solve problems. As long as you can demonstrate that, you have a fighting chance. Like there are so many stories of people like Mo and my background. Somebody, one of the ladies that interviewed me in Microsoft, she had a sociology degree. She was the VP of product <laughs> management. And I was just confused. I was like, wait, how do you go from sociology to product management? You are building cloud products. And it's, it was just her ability to communicate effectively and show that Obviously, when she got in her first job, she was able to kind of build on that. But it, do not be discouraged about your accounting degree at all. It's, it's, it's not a reflection of what you can do. Does that help answer your question? Um, yes, thank you. OK, um, so I have a quick question. Um, what's like, I'm new to the world of IT. I'm new to computers. So all I know about IT and computers is just AWS for now. Yeah. So like what other, um, is this skill or what other program am I supposed to be incorporating into this? Like what other thing? I'm, I'm not in a hurry to do my resume and other stuff. Like I still have a long, long time ahead of me, you understand? So yeah. what are the other things I can learn like to, as in to build my resume and all because there's aside AWS, there's nothing else. Well, I mean, the, the answer is really, it's up to you. What are you interested in? Do you like the idea of programming, for example, or do you like cybersecurity? You know, uh, more, the Amatech offers classes in cybersecurity. So if that's something, if you like defending systems and that's an aspect of IT that interests you, you can look into that. Uh, what I would tell you is that there are many, YouTube has so many videos that you can uh, access that will give you a basic knowledge of the languages. One language that I know more has talked about, and I've actually talked to other people in the IT field is Python. Python is a very powerful language. It's okay. a language that talks directly to the computers. So it's, uh, it's a very, it's an on-demand language right now. So if you can learn that, that would be very, very amazing. Okay. Uh, since you're not in a hurry, I am also going to learn um, Python as well. But for me, I'm more interested in the cloud. So I'm not just going to stop at the AWS associate. I want to, I'm thinking of getting the professional 
certification. I really, really want to have a deep, granted now I have a job in Microsoft, I might have to go learn about Azure as well, but um, I want to have a very good understanding of the cloud infrastructure and how it works. Mm -hmm. So I'm, but I just want to know Python at the basic level and just remember and just be comfortable writing some basic things. But if you like sitting in front of a computer and programming for 10 hours and that's what excites you, you know, go for it, you know. But I have seen from a lot of these uh, cloud solutions yeah. architect roles, they, there is a need for you to learn how to use some basic language. You know, there's JSON, Java, C++. If you can learn even HTML, yeah. if you can learn that, that, that opens your job opportunity. So it's, it's, it's all up to you. You get to build the future you want. Okay. And then look for the tools to empower you. So okay. if, I, if, if I may add to that. So you guys notice I took some time the last class to uh, to show you some basic Linux commands, right? Yeah. So we deal a lot with Linux. So as we take in this class, practice your Linux because that's the operating system. If you're applying for a job, you say, I know Linux. You don't have to be an expert. You can just navigate like what we're doing. That's a start. Uh, so what I started was what I said, okay, let me learn Linux because I went, I came in as a DBA. So I needed to learn Linux, which means I can start a server. I can install things on it. I can create folders. I can do all of these things, give permission. So uh, that is one, that's like, for me, I would say that would be your, your first language to learn. It's a language because you're giving commands to the operating system and it's, 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 it's doing those commands. So I would say, as you're learning this class, spend time. 15, 20 minutes when you start your Linux, just practice the Linux commands. Uh, watch YouTube YouTube videos on Linux command, get proficient at that as you're learning. That would be my first step, right? Now, once you've learned Linux, now you can play around with the operating system. You know how to move in and out of things. You know how to create files. You know how to delete files. That's a start. Then um, um, I was going into a database. So since I'm going into a database, I needed to um, learn SQL, SQL. Now, since I'm learning SQL, that's like uh, the language I used to speak to database. So those were the two languages that I learned before even getting to AWS. But the low hanging fruit right now for you guys is learn Linux. And once you learn Linux, you can build on that. You can learn Python. By the end of the class, if you literally, if you literally take like 15, 20 minutes and you're just practicing on your machine, your instance, you can be pretty proficient at it in the next eight weeks where you can just navigate, move, create files. That's what you need to know. And then you build from that. So it's baby steps. Just pick the long and foot. But if you ask me, that will be the one I would recommend for you guys to kind of master. It's the Linux language. And then maybe later you can do Python and any other, um, you know, class that you want. Make sense? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Mufti. And thank you, Mo, and thank you, Wally. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Um, I'm new in the IT field and I'm just now learning. And uh, I wanted to know, can we start like getting together our resume now and trying to apply? Because I have been in the, in this class for less, uh, less than a month. So do you think that we should start applying now? And uh, my second question is most of the time, on the job description or, or whatever, uh, they ask for years of experience. So with this course, how many years of, of experience we can say that we have? Thank you. So um, with my, with this training, uh, and it's a very hands-on. So my aim is with the amount of training and hands-on part, once you're done, I'm seeing it as equivalent of about, of about two years. Now, um, what I would say for the people who are done, the specific people, like I said earlier, this, class, this session was supposed to be more for the folks who are, who are done, the people like Fabrice, like Pharma, like Rashida too, who are done with their whole class. Okay. Um, they worry about the resume. For the people that are taking the class right now, this whole point is just for you guys to see what's ahead. So you take the class seriously. So you, when you're building these things, when I'm emphasizing on certain things, saying how you're building this application, have you built a web application? Guess what? You guys have. We've, 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 we've launched an instance. You, you install Apache and they create a website. Now, you don't have to be a web expert, but you've actually launched a web application. That's what it entitles. Now, the person who's going to be 
fixing a website that's the you know maybe somebody who knows wordpress you know that's not your job but you know you you know the process you know the system of setting up and launching a web application and how do you create a uh, and this week we started talking about uh, um um um, load uh, load balancer, which allows you to scale, not just be build an application, but a scalable application. So all these things we do, and we build in puzzles, and we, you guys are creating things. And these are the kind of things in an interview you can say, "I've done. I've launched an instance. I've built. I've actually helped develop a, a, a high a high availability uh, um, web application." That's what you guys are doing. So I would just say, take it seriously. Learn this stuff very well. Keep practicing every single day master what we cover read the stuff that i put so you get comfortable doing it so that's all i'm asking for the people that are taking the class now and once you're done you're you've mastered this stuff then you can start putting your resume together but you cannot put the the, the cart before the horse you have to do the work first you have to understand what you're doing then you build your resume and remember if you go apply now and you haven't done you don't know it and they ask you a question you know Mm -hmm. You can't defend it. So don't worry about the resume yet. Um, um, but again, I just want you guys to see where the future is going. So when you come to class, you're not just sitting in class and, 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 and saying, I'm learning, so I'm just taking a class. But you're trying to build your resume. You're trying to build your skill set so you can defend your resume. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Mo, if I may, um, I just wanted to say, that um, what Mo is saying about really mastering the thing is very important. And in our class, when we took our AWS sessions, I found that a lot of the, like the AWS documentations and things that he would post on the portal, when I would read, you know, some of that material, I would see things that I was not familiar with and it would lead me down, like just doing more research and um, asking, you know, getting more familiar with how AWS works. And so what that helped me is it, I, I had a much better understanding of how the cloud works. So even if I wasn't good with, you know, solving something, when we would do like our class examples, like creating a VPC, I understood, okay, Knuckles, I know what that Knuckles does. It prevents anyone from coming into your network. So I could, I understand that basic foundation and a lot of the materials on the platform really helps you. But like Mo said, you really have to put in the time and study. You know, do not think about the class as I'm just getting a certificate. Because a certificate isn't going to get you the job. It's being able to talk about um, what you've learned in a very uh, concise manner that people would know, okay, this person really, really knows what they're saying or doing. So even if you may not have the five years experience, but if you're able to get someone's attention when you build your resume, you show that you have a very deep master of that concept. The five years experience is, is just a number. It's what they used to filter people when they're applying. You know? But if you show that you have an understanding, assuming you get an interview when you do your resume, you pass the certificate, it really helps you when you're having conversations um, with uh, individuals. And I remember like when Fabrice did his assistant interview, you know, they were asking him questions. So how do you prevent someone from China coming into your network? But because, you know, Mo had talked to us in the class about blacklisting people at the NACO level using IP addresses and whitelisting people, you know, that understanding helps you answer your interview questions. You know, so th those are things that uh, reading the materials on the platform, doing the courses, even when you have learned how to launch an instance, go online and see how other people set up their instances. And so by the time you come to class, you're very equipped and you're getting the best bang for your buck when you're talking to more and, and you're asking new questions. Thank you. Again, uh, one of the things I want to push is don't just depend too on what I teach in class because there's only finite amount of time on things I can explain. I try to explain things as much as possible, but here's what I've learned. If I've explained certain things, I always have some reading material, something, some notes that, and Amazon is pretty good at giving you documentation. So if you can just take the time and sometimes read up 
on certain things we've covered in class. Just read it. It will make more sense. Something that's a little bit missing, when you read it, it will make, it will make sense. So even when we do a lab or something, you have a better understanding. The thing I don't want people to do is just depend on what I teach in class. That's all you have. Go and consume some more stuff. And I always post a lot of, I post relevant stuff on the portal. So it's up to you to go and, and, and consume that information. And sometimes what happens is as you start reading that stuff and you start doing exercises, you may get stuck or say, you know what? And you ask me questions. And then that's how, you know, something doesn't add up. You can ask questions, we have that discussion. But if you just depend on what I say in class, that's all you go with, that is not enough. Um, and, and you gotta really immerse yourself in this. And that's what I tell people every day, you gotta be spending about an hour practicing, learning, Always understand the concept. Why am I doing this? What is the main person? What is this? What am I trying to do? Once you understand the concept, then the second part is, okay, can I try to execute it? But if you don't understand it, you're just guessing, then it becomes, it becomes difficult. So uh, 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 just immerse yourself, be proactive. And in and, and this whole thing, you see here, Wale talks about, he would come to class, he would go watch videos, he would read up, and then he would follow up questions, say, Mo, what's up with this? And then it becomes a discussion. And even as he was looking for jobs, uh, this interview, he would call me, he's like, hey, Mo, there's this service in, 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 AW, uh, in uh, they have in uh, uh, Microsoft, uh, what is it? So I was like, oh, what, what, what's the machine doing? He says, well, they're gonna put it on prem and it's supposed to speak. And then I give him an example of saying, hey, this, I don't know that, but this is, a, it sounds like this is a technology. So we had a discussion about that, that particular caching um, um, uh, tool. And then in his interview, he came up and he was able to show that to the interviewer that, hey, I don't know yours, but I know I've used something like this. So for them, that means that it's not, it's not gonna take too long to learn it because you already understand the underlining technology. It's like you have a Dell computer and then you have a, 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 a Windows computer and then you have a, a Apple computer. They all do the same thing. It's just that they look a little different things and that, but at the end of it, they all do the same work. So it's similar to if you know Microsoft uh, already, uh, I mean, you know, AWS, it's, you can transition that to the Azure because the platform may be different, but what the tools, they, what they do, the technology is the same technology. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. A any more other questions? We uh, we almost went out of time, but again, uh, any other questions? Uh, Mo, I have a question. I think this is like really for you. Um, so in this class, are we gonna talk a uh, talk about like DevOps or not really? Uh, this is more of a solutions architect class. Uh, oh. The path we're going is solutions architect, so it's not a, it's not a DevOps class. So, uh, so you will notice that, yeah. Okay. So, but again, towards the end, we are going to talk about tools that are. We are going to talk about tools that are DevOps uh, related, but again, the DevOps path is different because the DevOps path is for, um, it's more so for. Uh, um, developers so you remember now um aws has three three parts it has the uh the 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 the, the devops it has the sysops and then it has the solutions architect the devops are the guys that are the, the, the developers the ones that are building applications the ones that are developing applications then you have the sysop guys the sysop guys are like the people that are running the day-to-day -day operations they're the ones that are making sure the servers are running. They're the ones that are making sure they're doing the patches and all of these things, right? They're helping with the day-to-day -day stuff. Then you guys are the solutions architect. You guys are the ones that are designing the system. Now, it makes sense for a systems, for a solutions architect person to, um, to, actually, uh, to actually be able to do some of the, uh, the, uh, the, de uh, the sysops. So like what you guys are doing, starting an instance, right? Um, um, running application uh, Apache. These are some of the things that the sysop people may uh, need to do. So you guys are learning that. So you, we are kind of incorporating some of the sysop work with what you do. But again, uh, DevOps is completely different uh, from uh, the solutions architect.
Well, to answer your question, at the end of the class, we are going to touch base on some of the, the tools that the DevOps people use. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, well, if you guys don't have any more questions, uh, uh, I think we'll call it a day. Um, so moving forward for the guys that have um, completed the class and are now looking for work, I'm gonna reach out to you guys individually and um, we will be talking about uh, uh, setting you up. Um, and then I think Owale uh, will work with some of you guys to get you started and we, we can go from there, okay? All right. Thank you, Mo. Thank you, Wally. Thank you, Mo. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay. Bye. -bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Wally. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, everybody. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thank bye -bye. you very much, folks.